bad. Dazzle. Dire team pick. Elder Titan. Bop. Dire team pick. Faceless Void. Alliances turn to pick. seconds remaining ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the betway wca 2016 european edition we're here with elements one versus alliance this is lower bracket elimination our earlier series today was postponed so we have just one best of three and this is do or die very exciting stuff these teams not wasting any time in the draft so let's go ahead and hop right into it i'm zayori joined today by android annie what's going on how you feeling Hey, feeling pretty good. Definitely uh, excited for this game here. I gotta confess, I'm a big Alliance fan, but Elements 1 put up a hell of a fight yesterday against Kaipi, so we'll see what they're gonna do here. Although Alliance, they go for the Drow Ranger second pick with the Dazzle. Uh, I'm not surprised to see a Huskar ban at all. Yeah, uh, no, definitely not. Uh, both sides with very different strategies, but heroes we're pretty familiar with. We were remarking yesterday that our meta hasn't really changed all that much post-TI, but the great thing about that is there are still so many heroes that are viable. We've still seen Faceless Void either first picked or first banned 100% of the time in this uh, short duration of the Betway WCA so far. This is only day three, but not surprised to see Elements 1 go for it. It could be a great solution to uh, a Drow Ranger. Uh, the, the Elder Titan Void is really good, especially in the late game, Papa Chrono, hit somebody with that Earth Splitter, and even those really tanky cores will end up taking a lot of damage. So, gives you a lot of flexibility. Good laning, good mid game, and also some good late game security. Yep, that uh, Void Titan combo was super, super popular in the EU qualifiers for TI, so good to see it back. It was definitely really strong, and Titan can stay uh, on and helping out into the late game, like into the you know, 50, 60 minute mark, so it's possible that Elements 1 can just pick late game and outlast the Strauss Strat. Yeah, uh, time will tell. I'm curious what Alliance will do uh, to build around this. Dazzle Drow is a great opener. Uh, Dazzle does have a good attack animation, but it opens up a lot of possibilities. Uh, Vengeful Spirit, not banned out. We do see her mixed in with Drow Rangers sometimes, and a, a lot of kill power when paired up with a Dazzle. Some natural synergy there with minus armor, a lot of physical damage. Um, also, two good supports to try and keep the Drow Ranger out of harm's way, right? She gets caught in the Chronosphere, and now you've got a swap or a grave and all those heals to try and keep her alive. Could be something Alliance want to go for. Uh, again, Pablo standing in today for Ake. He wasn't here yesterday either. Uh, word is that he's traveling, so um, he's unavailable. I don't think it has anything to do with roster swaps, just good old fashioned vacation time. <laughs> after TI. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Alliance pick up a Storm Spirit. I'm not quite sure uh, how cool S4 is about that Storm Spirit now in this meta, but uh, definitely something that combos with the Drow Ranger super, super well. Yep. No doubt. Marana. I like it from Elements 1. Nothing too crazy. Curious if it's uh, offlane void or position one void. I would, so that's kind of the eternal question right now when he makes it in because we've seen it both ways and successful both ways. Earthshaker, whoa, okay, that's a little bit different. Not the Vengeful Spirit I was thinking of, but still a great defensive support. Amazing against the Faceless Void. Uh, one of the classic choices because he has such long range on that Fissure. Void hits you with a Chrono. You can block him off from your Drow Ranger. I like this. And, of course, also a, a lot of damage output. Great high ground defense, all that Blink Dagger Earthshaker Earth Shaker stuff we come to love and enjoy. Yep, hope he's gonna be just walking around. What do you want to see Alliance pick up for the offlaner? Is there a possibility that we see a core shaker? Mm, I don't know, actually. I was kind of wondering that myself. Does Bulldog play offlane Earthshaker? That doesn't really strike me as a classic Bulldog hero, but uh, he does still have some choices. Uh, I mean, Lone Druid is still in the pool. I'm trying to think, do they ever run LD alongside the Drow Ranger? I think Bat Rider was a really good ban, something that uh, pairs nicely with the Drow. Also does make Puck a little bit more viable. Um, not the most popular mid laner because he doesn't scale that well, but when you have a Drow Ranger, you have that extra damage. He already has Dude, I mean, good it's base damage. Yeah. <laughs> But it does put them in kind of a state where they really have to close out the game. It's always what you want to do with the Drow Strap, but it, it removes some of that um, you know, potential recovery if you don't have a mid laner that can scale well. All right. 
right, so Elements 1 moving on onto their last two picks here. The Murano, definitely versatile all around. Most likely going to be in that mid lane, assuming we're going to see Void in the off lane position, just because he does get a lot of experience out of that. And that leaves Element 1 still with another support and their position 1 to pick up. So we'll see how they want to counter this Drow strat. I mean, what's the most effective gap close they can pick up here? Void's already all, all right. Um, they've got pretty decent follow-up into the Chrono. Hmm... Already got set up with Elder Titan. There you go. Great support choice. Now if Drow gets caught by an arrow, an Echo Stomp, or a Chrono Sphere, you've got a huge burst of damage that can follow up. And I don't think Mana Leak is ever really a bad thing to have, especially against a Storm Spirit. Very it. bold pick from Alliance. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just it combos so well, because one of Storm Spirit's big weaknesses is that it takes him uh, a little bit longer to get online compared to a lot of other mid laners, because his right-click damage is kind of eh, he's so mm -hmm. reliant on his mana pool and items, so Draw Ranger with that little bit of extra damage just allows him to farm a bit quicker, yeah. allows him to get a little bit more out of the early waves, and it just spirals him up really nicely. It's true. It's, really, it's a similar vein to Puck. It allows him to have a really strong early game and get the snowball going earlier than expected, like, like you said. Uh, good call, but um, he'll to be very careful against the Keeper of the Light, and still they have some decent control for the Storm. They don't have anything like a Lion, you know, that Blink Hex can be a really powerful tool, but still, uh, you know, Chronosphere, Echo Stomp, very effective tools. If you can catch them out, they, they definitely have some chance at killing here. So, final bands around the corner. Alliance looking for their Bulldog Hero, unless he's going to be playing the Earthshaker, though. I, I think it's pretty unlikely. Tide Hunter, that's a good band. I, I like it from Elements 1, good so team fighter. <laughs> Elements 1 are playing against Alliance, and they leave Nature's Prophet in the pool with the Draw Ranger. Yeah, uh, right? that's, a, that's a good point. <laughs> that seems copy-pasta worthy almost. Like, it's it's just such a bold pick. I mean, you know Bulldog's always thinking about it. You know, he's going to have the potential to have a strong off lane. Drow really well. Yeah, he's going to be right-clicking like mad, and he can just push out lanes. And, I mean, Elements 1 have some decent jump. They've got some decent gank. But if you're focusing all your attention on Bulldog, Draw Ranger can start running away. Yeah, I like the Nyx Assassin ban. A great hero against the Draw Ranger. Can get right in that back line, disable the marksmanship. Uh, also has the burst damage to just make her life miserable. And a Hurricane Pike, often not uh, enough to save you from the Nyx. Also a great hero to have against Storm Spirit. That mana burn becomes a big problem towards the late game. Him out of the pool, I think makes some sense. A lot of time, though, left for Alliance over there in that reserve pool. Uh, so they can think about this. Lone Druid, Nature's Prophet, probably the, the top two, the, the classic Bulldog heroes. <laughs> yes. What else do we have here? I mean, there is still the Beastmaster. Definitely something he enjoys yep. picking up and does offer a lot of split push, especially having the uh, Precision Aura with little Necro Buddies and Boars and whatnot. There's also a Weaver. Uh, Darkseer has been banned out. The Brood's been banned out. There is also a Clockwork. Um, oh I god, really I just don't like Clockwork, clockwork game, in this meta. But... I really think they'll go with a ranged hero. Uh, I think Weaver is an option if they want straight damage, but it's a little glass cannony. I think Just the push. Show me profit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think the push want. is the way to go. Because he also plays it as kind of a semi carry. He always goes for that build that has a fair bit of right click with Orchid, Maelstrom, uh, usually phase boots, you know, uh, into hex. But in the late game, he's still right clicking for, you know, 250, 300 to pop and has a lot of control. The hero does offer more than just split push, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, another thing to consider is that maybe you are kind of cornered into putting that shaker in um, in the off lane and then pick up another support just to kind of deal with Keeper the Light. I think that could be a real big issue. If Keeper the Light's always present in these fights, there then, it is. well, Storm Spirit is going to have some mana issues. But yeah. Nature's Prophet is just such a nice choice. So whatever goes down with Storm Spirit, Nature's Prophet's always on the other side of the map doing his own thing, and he is going to be clicking quite yeah. hard. Storm versus Coddle is kind of a, a weird matchup. Before 6, Coddle is such an effective counter to Storm. Uh, really good harassment, really slows down the things that he can do, but you know, once things get a little bit easier for Storm, he gets Bloodstone, he gets an Orchid, Coddle sort of just becomes food. The Mana Leak can still be annoying in trying to secure kills, you can you know, force him to zip around, but um, it, it does sort of go back and forth. Late game, Storm still definitely has some options. Just jump in, drop the Orchid, and poor Coddle is just going to flop over. So Elements 1, a couple of seconds left here. What is the decision going to be? They need their final Silence. core, either their off lane or safe oh. laner, and it's a silencer. Great choice against the Storm Spirit Earthshaker. Um, see how it works out. Pretty good with the Faceless Void. I think it's a position one void. Swift Ending will take it into the safe lane. Does that mean it's a mid-silencer off lane Marana? 
I believe so, unless they're switching up Safe Flame Marana and Off Lane Void, which might make a little more sense. So remember yesterday, they did do what we thought was going to be Core Ogre, and then they ended up switching roles at the, kind of the last second. So it can be a little tricky to predict with this team if they do the switcheroo again. All right, so going back in, I guess uh, Elements 1 are confident that they can counter this Nature's Prophet, but golly gee, I think that is a tall order. One of the most accomplished Nature's Prophets players in the world. Now combined with the Loda Drow Aura, I think there's just threats coming at you from all sides, and hopefully Elements 1 can deal with this. I mean, an ultra-strong laning phase could be what makes the difference here, but they've got to win all three lanes to have a shot. Yeah, uh, this Elements draft is one that I, I feel like it's going to be boom or bust pretty extreme. Either they'll have an okay laning phase if Alliance don't find too many kills, and they can just fight around the Chronosphere, find a lot of pickoffs, right? There are some options. Uh, Bouncer, pretty good laner. If Mitch can land some arrows, they have some decent setup for it. Maybe a Mana Leak stun. You've got the Stomp from Elder Titan, uh, and especially the, the Void Chronosphere, of course. So they have some options here, but this Alliance draft is damn scary. I mean, 10, 15 minutes, if Loda has a good start, if they make any mistakes, steps and find some kills towers are going to fall objectives will go the way of alliance and this could very quickly get out of control where that void chronosphere will all of a sudden look like two minutes on cooldown oh my god what do oh. we do in that window when alliance Full can smoke push gank gonna connect onto void he could be in some serious trouble hasn't skilled up that time walk he's just kind of sitting there and taking it now will time walk away i don't think they've got the gap close to get that close dazzle still holding on to the first point could go for the poison touch but there's the trance coming oh, back oh in my. fissure does some work they get off the slow and now s4 could be trying to do his best golly these trans just blocking him in. There's nothing he can do. One more hit, and his first blood goes away. It's EGM. Now, EGM is going to trade away his life for this. Milan, though, he might end up falling as well. It's going to be two dropping down on the side of Elements, and they're not quite done yet. Pablo dropping out another Fissure. Illuminate Blast does not finish off the Earthshaker. They do end up losing the Silencer. Oh, God, what a massacre. Alliance, they do lose one, but they trade for three. Oh, for four. It's just wow. a miserable time here. Now, Pablo could be in some trouble. He He's is... going to be trying to juke his way around. Can he actually get out of this? Well, he ate all of his tangos for this. So even if he lives, this is pretty costly. Run, Pablo, run. He's slowly regenning up. The Coddle just does so little damage at this stage. Oh, he's going to get sandwiched. Nowhere <laughs> to go. Nowhere to deny. Poor Pablo. Well, he's making some time at least. Milan comes in, gives him the staple gun. What a nuts beginning. The first blood, a long chase, and an obvious victory for Alliance. Four for two. And that'll give them a nice little lead to get things started. Already, 750 gold is the favor for our Radiant squad. Yeah, that was a nice little fight right there. It seemed like Elements just kind of kept throwing bodies onto the fire, but uh, Bulldog's micro on those two little trans keeping the faceless void locked down was absolutely what started that off in favor of Alliance. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, without that, touch. they wouldn't have found the kill. Coming back in. I mean, this is going to be a very, very pesky lane top to deal with. I mean, even with the aggressive Dazzle with the Poison he's Touch, dead. he's still going to be dropping down here. And there's not much you can do about that. Putting the off-lane Drow duo is still pretty scary. Yeah, it's kind of an odd lane setup here from Alliance. Going for an aggro try with the Earth Shaker. They'll put the Prophet in the safe lane to have the matchup against the off-lane Marana. So far, not going too well. But it is double melee for the Dire side, so something that might not completely go in their favor. Kato already level 2. Gets to that point now. Oh, bottom lane. Mitch magic. could be in some serious trouble there. Admiral Bulldog hitting like a fiend. Two more shots would have taken down that lady on a cat, but I mean, he's having an absolutely wonderful lane down here. Yeah, looking at the mid lane, Silencer having a pretty good time against S4. Utilizing the Arcane Curse pretty effectively. Very annoying for the Storm Spirit in lane. Not a fun experience. All right, so things have calmed down a little bit. We got some try on try action up in the top, and I don't know. I really like this dazzle builds. Early poison touch dazzles are just so much fun to watch because they're so strong. They're consistently underestimated because they're squishy, but you can just charge at them. Yeah, I think level one poison touch is pretty standard these days. Going grave level one is really not that great. If you can deny a first blood, oh. it can be worth it. We'll see a stomp. Maybe they can find a setup here, but they just don't have that much follow up damage. It is one of the problems with the oh. try lane. He'll be good. Yeah, they don't have any more silence to go back in. That's going to be a pretty big weakness until Drow picks up that gust. They aren't really able to keep the void controlled, but yeah. just the right-click slap damage coming out of Loda at this point is great, and his farm isn't suffering too much. Yeah. The level 1 heal on Dazzle has potential to do huge damage, actually, because it can bounce four times for 80 damage each. It's one of the biggest level 1 nukes in the game. Poison Touch gives you so much uh, ability to chase, find those early kills. Mitch 
Hanging out in enemy territory here. Looks to just snipe the centaur, stealing a little bit of farm. Thought he might be looking for a potential courier snipe, but I think it's just all about the farm. Getting too much out of the offlane, finds level 3, at least starting to move around the map a little bit. But great news for Bulldog. He's uh, pretty much in free farm heaven here. Great lane control, racking up the last hits and denies. They will rotate the uh, S4 down bottom. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So giving the mid lane now to the Earthshaker to leech some experience. Yeah, I mean, this lane down bottom has just been absolutely so free. So uh -oh, Bulldog mid. rotating in. They could be going back in. Pablo going to get stunned up just for a little bit. Maybe they can actually turn this, though. He tries to go for the Fissure, but will not live through the cast time. Unfortunately, he drops. If the Fissure had latched, maybe that would have been something they could work with. But just a free kill going the way of Elements. Yep, starting to get more on the scoreboard here. The kind of awkward rotation catching them off guard. This Marana was missing off the map, but hard to guess where she's going to be, especially when she comes from behind. You don't really think of Marana being in your jungle, uh, sneaking up at the mid lane when she's, you know, maybe presumably oh, farming EGM up here. EGM once again lane. could be in some trouble. Oh, oh, turn the other way. Oh no, Milan. He oversteps his bounds. That's again, this tri lane from Elements just seems a little awkward to me. Earthshaker just needs one good block, and it's so easy for this team to find follow up kills, especially with two points and frost arrows already for Loda. That slow already hurts. Why do you think Loda's going to grab up that Gust? Because it seems so important to keep the Void from time walking. Uh, I think likely level 4, to, to be honest. Uh, maybe he goes 2-0-2, two, two, but I think usually you want 1 point in it before level 6. Like the 2-1-2 two, and two, 5. Down bottom, S4. In some trouble, so. does get stomped up. He's not going to be level 6 yet. He can't leap out of this, and he will be falling. Marana finally finds herself a kill. Good rotation from Milan. Level 3 Elder Titan sets it up. Now back up top. LeBron. Oh, beautiful block from Pablo. The TP I don't think will be successful. And Dazzle gets credit for another one. Swift ending. We'll be able to time walk backwards, but another nice kill here for Alliance. Both sides finding pickoffs around the map. Glancing at the overall graph. It's actually Elements 1 that have, pull, that have pulled into the lead now, finding these kills. Yeah, but that is not the Bulldog factor yet. That is going to be absolutely huge. So whenever these big fights are going on, Bulldog's most likely just going to be ratting and pushing and getting towers. So I think it's really going to come down to these mid-game objectives. Yeah, for sure. Still not even level 6. He's just trying to get his farm going on. Already phase boots, the wind lays for a bit of extra movement speed. Interesting that Alliance has done this lane rotation. They seem pretty committed to S4 in the bottom lane. And again, Milan's looking to wrap around. Echo Stomp on the money. Mitch looking for an angle to arrow, but creeps nearby. They'll still find the kill. With Star Storm, it looks like. But the turn! EGM with the heal. Bulldog oh, hits 6. And man. Alliance get a 2 for nil the other way. Nicely done. Elements 1, not expecting that at all. <laughs> Wow. Bulldog just sitting there like, hey guys, you like the Wrath of Nature? I cannot believe S4 lived through that fantastic play. And, Great you know, bait, I think mate. Elements 1 are doing a really good job finding that very crucial window, that pre-level 6 in the storm. But mid lane, unfortunately, the silencer, well, he's actually going to be dropping this time. No Wrath of Nature to bail him out. Uh, yep. Good stun from Pablo. Didn't even need to block him off there. Just the right clicks alone are good enough. It's one of the best things about the Drow Ranger. This Prophet hits really damn hard right now. Harder than usual, and he's a right clicking machine. Loda almost level 6, so not even at that point yet where the marksmanship damage is kicked in. Just chipping away at the bottom tier 1. Mitch now retreating to mount a defense. Bulldog, number 1 on net worth, and a pretty good margin. Already at 3k in only 6 minutes. Going for his classic phase boots drum. Yep, sitting back, you've got Mitch and the Marana going to be very close to that Moonlight Shadow, so maybe some nice little ganks. If you're Elements, what's your most important focus right now? Is it locking down a specific hero? Is it pushing for objectives? Like, what Definitely does Elements have to do? Void. Yeah. Definitely uh, his level 6. He's just about to hit it, so that's no longer an issue. But when Void's on the position 1, he's your big damage dealer. Yes, Silencer right clicks will add up over time. He's going to get some stolen intelligence, all that good stuff. But that takes a lot of time to ramp up. Uh, the Marana, Coddle have a lot of damage to dump into the Chrono. But Void's going to be the one in the driver's seat to make this oh. happen. Up top, Bulldog. He's okay. so fine. I mean, he's just super tanky right now, and one Illuminate Blast is not going to do a whole lot. We see the Coddle not going for the early Mana Leak yeah, point, which I'm against surprised. the Storm Spirit is really surprising. I think 1-1-1 one, one, one at 3 on Coddle is a little more standard. It feels like you just get so much more utility out of that first point in Mana Leak. I, I would say that spell is absolutely a value point. Oh, it's about to go down middle. Mana. There's the level 6 revealed. S4 jumping deep. They do end up getting the Ooh. kill onto the Silencer right away. Moonlight Shadow 
Oh, it might not be in time to save up the Elder Titan here. He's going to get slowed down. It's going to be a dominating streak out for Admiral Bulldog. They're looking to chase down the Marana, but they don't want to commit too deeply. The Chronosphere does clip on EGM, but I think they can keep him alive. Yeah, he's squishy, but he's going to go back. He's going to heal himself. He can grave himself. This is just a massacre here. Alliance are showing their dominance. They're going to pick off the Void. They're looking for the Marana next. She's going to be going in, dropping the Star Storm. It's going to get everyone quite low, but they're not able to find any return kills off of this. EGM doing so much to stand on this Dazzle. He's transitioned into the 1-1-3 one, one, build, so Shadow Wave on that quick 8-second cooldown. S4 caught by the Echo Stomp. This should be a counter kill the other way. Mitch jumps in. Global Silence. EGM looking for the Shallow Grave, but he's short on mana. It even just acts as a distraction here. He S4. will fall. Milan able to bring him down, but S4, S4 does live. <laughs> the arrow doesn't clip the Soul Ring, so he had just enough mana to leap up to the high ground. What a fantastic play right there. Again, yeah, this guy is surviving by the skin of his teeth. Oh. The stop might come out, though. He might end up losing his life for this. As Elder Titan is just sitting around toying with the idea of going for the stop. Can he get out of range in time? He can. Nicely they cannot done. kill the Storm Spirit. And the Coddle did die to the Nature's Profit after that fight ended. I don't know if that was just Wrath of Nature or TPing in, but 13 to 6. Obviously, Alliance coming out big after that fight. Now about a 2,500 net worth lead. 2K experience. They are looking to be in fabulous shape. I need kill after kill, and the Drow Ranger nowhere to be found. Loda happy as a clam, just farming away down bottom. Man oh, finally coming out now. on the Coddle, and that haste rune will work against him, yeah. I'm back in, but Loda should be okay. Void can leap forward 10 more seconds on that. Nah, just gonna stop and farm. He has virtually nothing at this point. Yeah, I mean... Void kind of doing okay given the circumstances here, but Elements 1 as a team are just falling behind. You know, you can't really look at one of these cores and say, oh, they're really dropping the ball. Just overall, their team fight coordination, not quite there. And Bulldog just continuing to pull further and further ahead. Drums completed, 1200 gold now laying into this tier 1 tower up top. Alliance showing us why they are the heavy favorites in this matchup. Pretty lopsided odds. <laughs> yeah, the reason. Alliance just came out of the gate charging. They were ready to go for minute one. They found those early smoke kills, and now two towers going in their favor. Bulldog does end up getting the sprout. I don't know if they can actually keep Mitch locked down here. There is going to be the poison touch. Moonlight Shadow coming back out. Bulldog going with the TP forward. Mitch traps himself in the trees. Looks like Alliance are going to give no up detection. the chase for now. That uh, dust picked up by EGM right away after that, realizing the Moonlight Shadow is uh, becoming more than a nuisance. Tier 1 tower up top does fall in favor of Alliance, and only about half damage done on the Tier 1 down bottom in exchange. So yet again, another favorable trade for Alliance, uh, as well as, whoops, Daisy. <laughs> Good job, Zayori. As well as forcing out that Moonlight Shadow, which is a pretty long cooldown, 140 seconds. Threat they won't have to worry about for a couple minutes worth of farm time now. All right, meanwhile, you got Bulldog just doing his Bulldog thing now in the enemy jungle. He's already got his phase drums. He's got 2,000 gold on top of that. It's about to get real ugly for elements. I don't even think Alliance are close to their power peak yet, but they're uh, really starting to pull on that net worth lead. Yeah, Earthshaker now hitting level 6. Big milestone for him. 700 gold as well as Arcane Boots already up. Void putting a lot of damage into the Tier 1 tower down bottom, but Alliance not rotating for that. Instead, they move towards the mid lane. Looks like they'll do some pushing of their own. Loda... Now with the Dragon Lance, the core item on Drow Ranger that has sort of enabled her to come back into this meta. Sitting back from far, doing big damage, nice and survivable, Loda up to 1k HP, just sitting on brown boots, but I like that Alliance are starting this push nice and early with a glyph. They actually save the tower down bottom, delay it, and it will stay alive just in deny range as they finish off the tier 1 mid. Again, Elements 1 just getting out positioned. They came back to make a defense, but no defense was mounted to void the initiator they needed there. He does end up finishing off the tower down bottom, but Elements 1 were hoping for a little bit more there. Yep, so I mean, if you're Elements right now, what is your plan? Do you just farm up the void and pray that this goes ultra late? Or do you have to start mm -hmm. grouping up and no ganking way, and roaching and oh god down bottom? Yeah. It's about to get nasty. Smoke rotation, and this is just a couple of right clicks to kill. Gust makes this nice and easy, oh. or it should. Pablo with the dunk, just as he's about to time walk, catches that cast point and brings down the void before he gets back the HP. Nicely done, great use of the echo slam. A striking debut, and Paolo getting credit for that kill is actually pretty ideal. He's now up to about 1,600 gold, 12 minutes in, looking like a great timing on this support Earthshaker's Blink Dagger. Yeah, this has just been such a bloody game, and that really does benefit Alliance's draft so much more than Elements. I mean, we've got basically two kills a minute going forward, and yep. we'll see how that's going to that. transition towards the mid-game. I think you can say laning phase is very effectively over. <laughs>
Um, pretty much, yeah. Alliance doing a good job deciding when to group up and go back to farming. Total tower count, only one in their favor. They've taken out all three tier ones. Elements taken out. Um, oh, actually, only just one. That tier one down bottom. Tier one mid still standing. Oda going for a Shadow Blade up next. Interesting stuff there. Shadow Amulet already in tow. I think for this, the Elements 1 need to focus on farming up some of these core items. As always with the Core Marana, you need that Agonims as quickly as possible. And Mitch is off to kind of a slow start here. Brown Boots, Point Booster, just 500 gold, so still pretty far away, about 2,500 to farm up. And until that item comes out, I think Alliance can feel pretty comfortable taking 5v5 team fights, assuming the Void doesn't get the perfect Chrono uh, and catch their entire team into an Earth Splitter and Illuminate from the Coddle. But... Their damage is just lackluster until the Silencer and Marana start to come online a little bit. Yep, yeah, so we'll see what Element's plan is if they want to go and they want to just focus on farm, focus on perhaps taking Roche as they send their spirit into the pit to scout. Uh, that could be a pretty decent comeback mechanic, but it's quite bold. I don't think lane. they can kill it. They don't have the damage. They've got no minus armor, nobody that synergizes with killing Roshan, no enchantress to tank it, not even a medallion to break his armor. They could kill it, but it would take so much time that I don't think it's worth it, and it would provide a pretty good opportunity for Alliance to try and contest me. Bulldog is massively farmed right now. He's got the Maelstrom already. Picking this item up Jeez. at 13 minutes with a drum oh, phase boots. God. Like, a couple of chain lightnings, and you look at his Keeper of the Light with 700 HP. I mean, two chain lightnings is almost a third of his HP just in these team fights. So, it's. I, I don't think Elements 1 are going to be comfortable taking anything more than just a 3v1 style pickoff. Yeah, meanwhile, S4 has just been sitting in top. He's doing some pretty decent work in terms of getting his farm up. Uh, definitely going to be working towards uh, his Bloodstone quite soon. And uh, he's kind of been putting in this split push. We'll see the rest of his team start to rotate. Going to just easily dodge out the arrow from Mitch. And looks like Alliance should get a clean getaway. Yep, seems like it. Swift ending, still just trying to farm up. This Void, man. Net worth, I, I guess, is about par for the course, but... Feels so underfarmed. Their courier died, by the way. I totally missed that, but uh, Dyer had been without a courier for the was, past uh, couple minutes. It was down in that uh, Echo Slam bottom, I believe. Oh, okay. Well, a little extra gold going for Alliance then. Here's what Boyd's going for. I guess he's just going to go uh, Vlad's first. Feels lackluster, though. This is what I would expect out of an off-lane Void at this timing in a game like this. Remember, he's their position one safe-laning farmer, so to see him with this item kit at 15 minutes is... Ew. A little bit damning. Yeah, I mean, we talked right after draft about how elements would really need to win every single lane to make this an impactful mid game, and well, I gotta say they're kind of 0 for 3 on that. I think Alliance did a fantastic yeah. job just rotating the resources accordingly, and uh, just looking at the overall net worth chart, you can really see that they're yeah. pulling ahead. It's about 7,500 or so. It is uh, significant at this stage. Elements 1 realizing they're behind, they want to make a play happen, and at some point they've got to do something. I like the idea to try to fight around the Chrono and the Global. Oh, the brilliant scan! Smoke, or scan from Alliance. They see it coming. S4 breaks the smoke on Swift Ending. And they will just start to disengage. Nicely done. Good read. No wards Stop. in the area. That was just Alliance thinking, hmm, they've been missing for a while. I wonder where they could be. I mean, that is just phenomenal game sense. This is what makes these guys just such a great team together. They can kind of get in the heads of their opponents and really figure out what's going on. Because knowing exactly where to scan, when to scan, that was flawless. Yeah, perfect use of it. S4 just going for the Bloodstone. Pretty standard stuff on Storm these days. He does have a regen rune on right now. A dream for Storm Spirit. They could probably catch the Silencer, maybe force him to waste a global, but it's up top. They want Bulldog. I mean, they get the lockdown, they're dumping everything for him, they keep him stunned up, but the rest of Alliance, they can rotate back in, the Keeper of the Light might end up going down, one more shot from S4 means he's going to be dropping down, so so far it's a one-for-one -one trade, not necessarily in favor of Alliance, but at least they're able to get something up, but the rest of the team now rotating up, looking for some sort of return kill, there is going to be the dust popped out from EGM, they go through, the Fissure connects onto the Silencer, we'll see what direction they want to go for now, as Void goes in, latches a Chronosphere onto two, and there is going to be a Stomp to follow up, they should be able to get a couple heroes from this, but S4 making sure that Stomp does not connect. They do end up dropping the oh. Brown Ranger though. Pablo goes in, drops the slam, and is able to get off the silencer. So in the end, still a bloody fight. Might not be the end of it here. They're looking to get down Milan, but he's so speedy. Fissure connects, but with Swift ending still up, I don't think this is a fight Alliance want to continue to take. Yeah, Alliance having a lot of trouble securing the kills here. Bulldog did buy back for this. The Drow Ranger, unfortunately, ended up in a pretty rocky position in the middle of that. Ended up getting killed early on, and 
they're really relying on the Drow's aura. It's level 3 right now, and with her dying first in the fight, it limits their ability to find those kills. It was a really good Echo Slam from the Earthshaker. It did a fair bit of damage, and I thought they could find some more kills out of it, but like you mentioned at the end, that Elder Titan just a little bit too fast, a little bit too tanky, and the Fissure was not enough. Earthshaker has his Blink Dagger. Saw it there in the fight, and... Well, still looking okay for Alliance. Not an ideal fight. We see a little drop in the net worth, but they're still happily in control. They can go back to farming for another few minutes. I think still feel okay about this game. Also, just waiting for the Bloodstone on S4. Always a turning point on this hero. Allows the Storm to start farming a lot more effectively and can be a little more bold jumping into those fights when he has 12, 13 Bloodstone charges. Yep, so we've got we've got all our casters Sorry. doing funny little symbols. Uh, but down bottom, S4, he's going to get very close to completing his Bloodstone. Now zipping forward very, very deeply. Does end up connecting onto Milan. He's going to be trying to go Glimmer in phase. He has the Glimmer Cape. I don't think he can go through and cancel this. 3 no out, but that was a panic moment for Elder Titan. Uh, Glimmer Cape, a good choice for Elements 1, especially since Alliance have been kind of lazy with the detection this game. They have picked up dust on both of their supports now, Pablo and EGM. Uh, might be uh, sometime soon that they want to grab a gem and put it in the hands of S4 so we can find those kills. I think with detection there, that's an easy kill. They should have ways to interrupt the TP out. Even just the right clicks alone could probably uh, win that race against the clock before he makes it out. A small missed opportunity still. I mean, Alliance happily in the lead, so you know, he can only complain so much. Yep, moving forward again, just about to cross that 20 minute mark, firmly planting us in the mid game. We've got Marana moving towards the Aghanim Scepter, still mm -hmm. uh, about 1,000, 2,000 more gold to go for that. Uh, and we'll see her start to have a real big impact, because for now, I mean, her most impact has been just kind of the right clicks from the back lines and leaping away from fights but when she's able to leap forward aggressively and drop that double star storm it's going to get real nasty because alliance are pretty squishy for the most part yeah totally agreed it's almost doubles her damage output effectively in fights or her ability to control bursts that way so uh, a lot of pressure on mitch here a lot of eyeballs on the bottom hits level 11 so that second point moonlight shadow will be coming out a lot of momentum for Alliance, though. Loda, I wonder what he's working on next here with this item build. Shadow Blade. I doubt he wants to go into a BKB right away. Maybe something a little more damage focused, but curious to see. Another smoke coming out. Game they can actually is. get big lockdown here. If they can pick off S4, that's huge, but looks like they are going to opt to place themselves into the Roche Pit. They'd like a couple picks to start things off, and they should be able to find one. The smoke does break onto S4, but immediate leap out. Swift ending, definitely looking for a chrono, but all the Fissure nicks him right in the back of the legs, and now the rest of Alliance are going to be coming back in. They want to find something for this. You've only got Pablo cowering here. No TP on this poor little bugger. He's oh, going to be going no. in. He's got the metal leak. Yeah, Pablo just getting played with, surrounded by five heroes. Maybe a bit excessive. Yeah, Bulldog will try to split the push up top all the while. That is a mega kill streak ended in favor of the Keeper of the Light. Not a huge deal, but a pretty penny going the way of the Dire side. Every little bit adds up at this stage as they are still at a pretty significant deficit. Unfortunate for the Earthshaker, but I mean, Alliance overall still have had pretty minimal losses. Except for that one big fight we just saw, it's mostly their supports that are dying. If you look at the Dazzle, he's 2, 4, and 8. The Earthshaker, 5, 3, and 7. But their cores have not died much. Bulldog, only one death. S4, only one death. And Loda, also only one death, uh, nine assists. Down bottom though, S4, caught by the Chrono. I mean, they've got all the lockdown in the world, but can they actually get the job done? He's just sitting there tanking it like a machine, and they are going to bring an EGM. The Global Silence comes out, so we so can't late. leave away anymore. The Grave might end a little bit too early. One more arrow to the back. We'll kill off S4, but Bulldog jumping back in. They are able to secure the return kill on the Marana. Leap away from Swift ending. They don't have anything to cancel this, so unfortunately yeah. not able to make it a two for one. I think just a one for one. call that a misplay from the Silencer, though. If he had globaled a little bit earlier, the Dazzle wouldn't have been able to get off the Shallow Grave. They wouldn't have had to commit so far, and that would have been a kill they could have walked away from, but instead they have to commit uh, commit really deep, uh, wait for it to LeBron. expire. LeBron has a Another glimmer, cape. glimmer cape. And again, no detection on the hands of Loda. Now on the mid. other side of it. Yeah, Silencer falls and Milan is going to drop also. The distraction up top proves well for Alliance. Three for nil around the map. He'll be happy with that after all. LeBron's still sitting back. He goes into his ultimate form, so maybe trying to recall someone in to take on Loda, but that's pretty bold. Loda sitting there oh, TPing out, out, and they're not going to be going in, not going to use that blinding light. It's Roche time, baby. Heading into the pit, S4 tanking it up. Loda, and join the crew here. He does recall in Mitch, however. I don't think they saw Loda TP out. 
That's a dire scan right there. They really want to find this kill, but little do they know he's on the other side of the map killing Roshan. Kind of a heartbreaker for Elements 1. Uh, a good opportunity there. Loda will just go into the Hurricane Pike next, by the way. Four staff and recipe picked up. It's coming out. So a little more survivability for him. Pretty standard. And S4 now with the Aegis of the Immortal, as well as his 10 charge Bloodstone. All right, so everyone rotating around Alliance, deciding whether they want to push, whether they want to fight, whether they want to smoke up and force the issue. But, I mean, I'm actually a little bit surprised Alliance haven't started pushing a little bit more aggressively. Okay, they go in. The dust is going to latch everything unloaded for that Keeper of the Light. Now, the stun up. Pablo under tower. He could be facing some serious damage here. The Shallow nice Grave break. does come in. He's trying to TP out. Will he be able to live through this? They have anything to cancel it. Well, he gets out safely, and Mitch is going to get... Splashed out by that gust. S4 just kind of playing around. Knows he has Bottom. mortality coming back out. The Chrono does connect. It's just Bulldog versus the world here. But again, he's so tanky. Just goes in with the Sprout trying to TP out. And the Bash, oh. unfortunately, not going to come through, man. Lady Luck. Poor RNG. Not on the side of Faceless Void. Might have been able to get off another auto attack if he hadn't fogged himself a little bit there. Good idea to eat through the tree. It was a close call. But now Mitch walks into the danger zone. Gets eaten by a Silence. He will live for now, but they've got the follow-up damage. Down he goes again. A late global from the silencer. Now it may cost him his oh. life. Bulldog hops forward. The right clicks are too much. It's really starting to add up here. Elements 1 conceding so much to Alliance. We're only 23 minutes in, but this Drow strat is starting to feel pretty successful. Yeah, I mean, just take a look at the overall XP. The levels are there on Alliance, and they're just not on Elements. Yeah. Level 11s are wow. rolling in very, very slowly. Uh, level 16 already on Bulldog here. The maxed out ultimate. Blinding Light will help break things up, but it <laughs> makes the Echo Stomp less than effective. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yep, not ideal. A couple of buybacks available for Elements 1. They will use their Glyph, but this Tier 3 dropping fast. They sidestep the Illuminate Loda from the low I mean ground with that Hurricane Pike, just able to chunk down the tower, and that's it. Tier 3 down. Bulldog's positioning in that entire fight was just kind of like, screw you, I dare Very you to bold. jump me. Um, and he gets out completely fine. I'm just going to TP himself up to the top lane and continue to pressure. That is what he's good at, just finding an opening and ripping it wide open. Yeah. But lead starting to get much larger now. Breaking into five figures, 10k experience, 10k gold. Loda now moving into probably the BKB Ogre Club already in tow. I think at this point it's definitely warranted. Doesn't keep you safe from the Chrono, of course, but a lot of magic damage on the Marana now that she has the Agon, as we've been talking about so much, and it makes sense to have that tool to be able to deal with that. Also, the Global Silence, BKB, a great thing to have against that. Up top, Bulldog. Not going to find the kill, but his friend S4 might. Yeah, there's Pablo. Go on. <laughs> now in some trouble, S4. Keep him in place with Electric Vortex and the right quicks. Find the kill now. Silencer for staff, he'll live, but this silencer just feels so lackluster. He can't do anything. Global way too long of a cooldown against this strat. This long duration, Alliance has punished so much. They've taken out all of these towers, and meanwhile, mid, Marana falls once more. I mean, Alliance can just keep their foot on the gas pedal. They're really not long cooldown oriented. Yeah, they've got the Echo Slam, but that's not a huge source of their damage. Their damage is right click, their damage is little tiny spells that come off cooldown very quickly, and <laughs> god damn, Admiral Bulldog, be nice. This oh, one's God. over, man. Yeah. This is just a bloodbath. 28 to 11. Oh, the buyback comes. Oh, he's taunting. Oh, Bulldog. Yeah. Silencer oh. might be able to live here. Here's the global, the final stand for Elements. And S4, he takes two right clicks in the duration of the global, make it three. And Alliance will just walk away. I think S4 shouldn't be able to make it out of oh. this one. But no, the arrow clips him. It's the end of the Aegis. We'll see if he can zip out. There is a Chronos Pablo. here, but a beautiful stun from Pablo. They might still get a kill on LeBron. They do. If Pablo walks away from this, oh my, Alliance, they could be in great shape here. He has his blink up in two. Pablo, Pablo. taunting a little bit. He wants to come back in. They're going to set it up. Chrono now onto Alliance. But do they have the follow-up? They certainly do. Drow Ranger down, but now S4 rejoins the party. Mitch getting chunked. Pablo finds the kill on Silencer. Alliance might still have the resources oh, to take man. this fight. Bulldog in the back line, laying in swift ending. He gets the Glimmer Cape, but now the Dusk out right clicks will bring him down zip forward and good night to the faceless void milan trying to tp home but it matters not as gg well played is called 32 to 13 26 Bulldog, minutes stop they're already dead whoa <laughs> alliance that unrelenting awesome good stuff from alliance uh, i think appropriately the heavy favorites coming into this matchup <laughs> it's only game one but oh jesus bulldog <laughs>